coming up with brilliantly put everything together and made it easy for the reader to understand. To achieve that, he created a 10 posture a general ethnicity model, appended at the end of the book. Now, post-publication, we were all astounded by the almost immediate acceptance and acquisition of the book by major university libraries, which up to now include 114 universities and national libraries in Australia, Canada, the USA, United Kingdom, Holland, Denmark, and Switzerland. And that's only six months after the book's publication. The endorsement of the back cover on the back cover of the book by a top Oxford University scholar, James Perfect, and the acquisition of the book by all of the Ivy League schools in East, Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, and in the West, Stanford, USC, USC and the University of California, as well as Cambridge University in England, all point to the book's great significance. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you all for a round of applause to the for the author of this important book for us Macedonians, by one of our own. Someone I call Chichkoatenas, and consider him a mentor for myself and countless of other Macedonians. A man that humbly calls himself, himself Atenas the Damche, and the, and the world, rest of the world knows him as Dr. Ernest Demunopoulos. Macedonia and Greece. 
Now, a few years ago, I met Evgenia through one of the many Macedonian forums that I frequent. I believe it was Mac News, if I'm not mistaken. I think Ruby's here. Thank you. And my first impression of Evgenia was, wow, are all of our women in Aegean Macedonia this fearless, bold, and outspoken? But then I remember my great grandmother, Baba Kipra, who was a little girl during the Balkan Wars, together with at least 12,000 other Macedonians, was forced out of her home in Kukush by the Greek government. You see, I was very young when Baba Kipra passed away, but her stories about her Kukush and the suffering that she and our people went through, and especially the fact that the Greek government never allowed her to go back to her Macedonia, or to at least even visit, had a lasting and profound impact on me, and may very well be one of the main reasons why I'm standing here in front of you tonight. But enough about me and Baba Kipra, God bless her soul. I would, like to say, I would like to say a few more things about Evgenia before I ask her to join me here at the podium. Evgenia's passion for Macedonian human rights is truly inspiring. And that alone was enough to make her an obvious choice for the important role as UMD's official representative for Greece, Greece in Aegean Macedonia, which is the first of its kind for UMD. But as I mentioned earlier, prior to her appointment as UMD's official representative for Greece and Aegean Macedonia, Evgenia had used that passion and boundless energy to produce some extraordinary results for our cause with, no match, with not much financial support from anyone else. You see, a few years ago, Evgenia, with other Macedonian activists in Aegean Macedonia, formed the educative and cultural movement of Volen, as I mentioned earlier. And they started organizing cultural projects in Aegean Macedonia. Since then, Evgenia had, and her team have started publishing Zadruga magazine, organized, talk, uh, organized folk dancing events, started the Volen Makelosko internet radio station, and have translated many important Macedonian books most recently, they worked hard to publish The Message of the Local, a book about the 100-year anniversary of Greece's forced annexation of Macedonian territory in 1913, which they have also begun distributing for free throughout the country. Ladies and gentlemen, before I call her here to join me at the podium, it is my honor and pleasure to ask you all for one more round of applause for the one and only Evgenia Natsubidu. Uh, 
uh, activities was the organization of uh, um, language, Macedonian language cl uh, classes for Macedonian speakers, adult, adults, um, free of charge. Um, in our office, we had a teacher who is a member of the Macedonian minority of Romania, uh, who was a student in the university in Skopje and was a very good friend of mine. And she offered voluntarily to uh, teach us uh, how to read and write in Cyrillic alphabet. We did this for about five months. After uh, that period, uh, we got a letter from the tax office in Boden to present ourselves, I mean, the responsible of the company, which is me, and to, to explain something. They didn't exactly say what, but uh, the law by which we were invited was because some uh, financial crime has been committed, like tax evasion or income not uh, uh, declared or whatever. Um, when I went to the tax office, I, I have the right as a Greek citizen to, to see the papers that, um, or the denunciation of someone about the crime I, I committed or the company had committed. They didn't uh, give us the papers, they just told us that uh, they saw on the internet that we publicized these um, classes of Macedonian language and they wanted to see if um, uh, this is kind of private school or something and if the people pay, pay something. I told them that the, the classes were free, that they were announced as free. They actually wanted to know the names of the students and who the teacher was. Of course, we never gave these names. And the um, thing was finished there. We had to stop the classes stop. We were not so afraid about our company or the members, but uh, about the, the students. If the authorities had the way to know who was coming, the classes, who knows what kind of problems these people could have faced with the tax office, with the police, with anything. Um, you shouldn't forget these people were uh, well, uh, professionals, shopkeepers, employees. We couldn't risk any of them to have problems because this would have been very bad for our movement, for our um, association. Uh, so, we had to stop this activity. Seven ma months later, uh, as we said and announced that uh, the classes sometimes will, be st will start again, uh, they sent a second uh, invitation. This time, the, they wanted to see our office, our premises, to see, to make sure that it's not uh, um, a classroom where we actually have this activity for business. Um, when I said that uh, why the, uh, they should see the office, the moment that there's no denunciation, declared that no classes are taking place, place they threatened me with um, um, the public prosecutor that they would have opened the offices with the order of public prosecutor. And confidentially, they told me that the order this time came not from the local tax office, but the economic, um, the Minister of Economy in Athens. You can imagine, in a country where the tax evasion is, is a national sport, <laughs> why they, exactly, uh, how they managed to, to make all the system work for a so small company, non-profit, with a very uh, small um, annual re revenue. We got the message. Uh, now, the only way now to continue the classes will be to have our own teachers, Greek citizens, who may get some uh, kind of uh, degree 
of knowledge of the Macedonian language, like a proficiency in English 